Hello chess lovers, Sonan here and in this video I want to share with you a very exciting game which strangely nowadays is little known. The game was played between two chess masters. On the white side is Canadian chess player Igor Ivanov and his opponent is Soviet chess player Vitaly Zaitsman. Ivanov's story is actually very interesting. In 1980, after playing in Cuba as part of the Soviet team, he made his wild dash to freedom from the KGB in Canada during a refueling stop in Gander, Newfoundland. Ivanov then settled in Montreal. This game was played in 1983 in New York. In this game Ivanov had white pieces and he opened up with knight f3, to which Zaltzman answered with d5, c4, e6, d4. With a transposition of moves, we reached Queen's Gambit declined. c5, black is choosing the Tarash defense. c takes d5, e takes d5, g3, knight c6, bishop g2, knight f6, white castled kingside, bishop e7, knight c3. The players are pretty much following the main theoretical line. Black castled kingside, bishop e3. Bishop g5 is a popular alternative. Already, d takes c5 is the threat, that's why black played c4, relieved the tension in the center and later, by going for a queenside pawn push, black can organize his counterplay. Knight e5, queen a5. This seems to be a bit awkward move for the queen. Bishop e6 looked more natural. Instead, black is freeing the d8 square for the rook to strengthen the d5 square further. Bishop g5, rook d8, e3 h6, Bishop takes f6, Bishop takes f6, f4, Bishop takes e5. Uh, this is a very risky move with which black is like giving white a green light on the king's side. Instead uh, playing knight e7 is better. And then bishop e6 for example. Instead in the game we see bishop takes e5 which allows white to organize a very dangerous king's side attack. f takes e5, bishop e6. Queen h5, rook d7, rook d1, rook f8, a3, queen d8. It seems like that black doesn't have a definite strategic idea and all black can do is to defend. a6, rook d2, b5, rook df2, queen e7, g4, queen d8, first queen e7, queen d8, yeah, seems like that. Black has lack of ideas, meanwhile white is intensifying the pressure. Knight e7, knight e2. At this point white had a chance to beat his opponent on the spot. G takes h6, just asks itself to be played. If g6 then queen g5, and if king h7 then h5. And if knight f5 then white can go for an exchange sacrifice. The rook is untouchable because of the checkmate. And if you go for the exchange of queens, then even in this case, this line favors white. The central pawn on d5 also drops, and yes, black is in trouble. Victory is just a matter of moves, you know. Uh, let's go back. Instead, in the game, we see knight e2. g6, queen takes a6. With his last move, white voluntarily trapped his queen and provoked knight f5, after which... Rook takes f5 is virtually forced, bishop takes f5, and there comes another blow, a move which just asks itself to be played, probably you guessed it, rook takes f5, there we have it, the second exchange sacrifice is on the board, g takes f5, knight g3 trying to exploit the weaknesses of the light squares, f6, knight takes f5, at this point g6 or g takes f6 are alternatives, and are even stronger than knight f5. Rook h7, queen g6 check, king h8, g takes f6. After making so many brilliant moves, white is making a mistake, and this move allows black to equalize. In here the winning move is e6. The threat is e7. And now if f takes g5, then e7, and after the exchange on e7, in the end of the day, here is how white can win. If king g8, then bishop takes d5 check, and then queen takes g5. The game is over. Here, then bishop takes f7, yes. The queen end game is hopeless for black. Seems like that you can even force an exchange of queens right now. 
and by simplifying queen very easily. Uh, instead, we see g takes f6, rook g8, and another heavy blow by Ivanov h5, this time he's sacrificing his queen. Knight uh, g7 is an alternative, but white chose this razor sharp h5 move. Rook takes g5, so after two rook sacrifices, a queen sacrifice followed. But now let's see, how is white going to make a progress? Actually, black has to play very accurately against this rolling pawn avalanche supported by the bishop and the knight. It's very difficult to withstand. Queen d7, a mistake. Rook h5 is the move for queen e8, which are allowing to keep the balance. If g7, then king h7. If f7, then rook takes f5. And in the end of the day, the players are getting equal chances. Instead, we see queen d7. And the problem with this move is that by playing g7, white could win on the spot. I have to tell you that already the players were in a serious time trouble and they are starting now to make mistakes one after another. If king g8 then bishop d5 followed by knight e7 is winning and if a move like rook takes g7 then f takes g7 followed by bishop takes d5 yeah again white is winning knight e7 but instead, after queen d7, we see e4 move by Ivanov. This is a losing move, by the way. And at this point, by playing rook h5, black could win. If g7 check, then king h7. If knight e7, then rook g5. A brilliant defensive resource which allows black to stop the g-pawn. Instead, we see d takes e4. And again, this time it's white who is gaining advantage, you know. With g7 check, white could win. This is how it goes. Check. And then bishop takes e4. Just no way out, you know, white is winning. Instead, white played bishop takes e4. Which again allows black to put a tough resistance with rook h5. In this case, in the end of the day, when you are going for a pawn promotion, black has this rook g5 check. Uh, the engine evaluates the position as equal. Instead, we see king g8, the losing move after which white won't give his opponent a second chance to survive. King g2. Uh, g takes h7 is an alternative, but we see king g2. a5, d5. And now how are you going to stop this avalanche rolling down the board? Queen c7, d6. Queen c5, g takes h7 check. So that was very strange of black of leaving the rook on h7 for that long, you know. Not sure what's gone wrong in Zaltzman's mind, but probably was thinking that the rook on the 7th rank was playing a huge defensive role, but definitely something went wrong in his calculations. Black gave some more desperate checks and at this point on move 44 resigned. White has a piece up, this black king is in danger, there is a past pawn on the 6th rank, finally black capitulated. It's a pity that white made too many mistakes, you know. Let's take a quick look how white finished up his opponent uh, without sidestepping the main game. This is how the main game went on and this time we won't delve into the variations. Yeah, white missed so many opportunities in time trouble, but luckily in the end finally managed to force a resignation. At this point, Black resigned. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for Black. It's Black to move and, as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.